VHS I had for my birthday was uh, Lord of the Rings and the Fellowship of the Ring. That was my Sick. last last. Then the next ones was all of them um, DVDs. And the good mm-hmm. thing of DVDs they come normally with the behind the scenes yeah. almost every uh, almost every movie. You know, with a little bit of art related in the industry thing, mm-hmm. they always come with the behind the scenes. And I remember just like see the movie and then the whole week repeat the behind the scene video yes. over and over. I like to see all the maquettes, all the drawings. George Lucas pointing, you know, a <laughs> wall of drawings up for me was like I was like, oh, so there's people who you know who paint and yeah, and and, and that's a thing, you know. Like I was thinking like ah, that's not a thing, you know. Yeah. But I'm thinking that's not a job. I thought like that's a friend of George Lucas who was yeah. making that. <laughs> Today's guest on the Learn Squared podcast is Pablo Dominguez. Pablo is a highly accomplished concept artist who has worked on projects such as Star Wars. Jurassic World 3, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, Game of Thrones, and much, much more. His portfolio is packed full of excitement and brilliance, and he brings these very qualities to his Learn Squared course, Vehicle Concept Art. In this episode, get a deeper look at Pablo's course, as well as how he broke into the industry and why he has beef with Motion Blur. Buckle up and discover the life of Pablo. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, but let's get going. Uh, Pablo, welcome yeah. to the Learn Squared podcast. Hello, and, and thanks for having me here. <laughs> yeah. So happy to have you on, man. And at, at the point of this recording, we are less than 24, no, just over 24 hours away from the release of your course, Vehicle oh, Concept yes. Art. So um, really excited for that one. Obviously, I just mentioned why a moment ago. Um, mm-hmm. But like the course is packed full of so much knowledge, not just in terms of just just vehicles technical but, stuff I said, exactly I, I try to explain a little bit you know all my thought process and all my inspirations in the course all the mm. time and as i say i guess i because i'm the kind of people who say everything almost in the videos i'm yeah. saying like maybe i'm repeating myself but just <laughs> to remind everybody that kind of you know important stuff because it's always uh, easy to get loose in not important things you know when you're designing something Exactly. I mean, I guess normally um, we touch upon like intro stuff, but yo, let's get right into the course. Um, we're thinking about to split it over five lessons at this point in time. It originally was four because yep. there's so much content in there, so much good content in there. Um, yeah. Like, as an artist yourself, you, you're you yep. very good at, obviously, clearly very good at vehicles, but you're quite broad in terms of what you do overall as well. Um, what is it about vehicles that made you want to teach that? Uh, because in some kind of way, uh, it's like, um, because I, as I was, when I was talking uh, with uh, Mo uh, to make the course, uh, I was thinking like, why, I, I mean, they wanted to could they make a course with me, but you know, they give me freedom to do, you know, whatever I want. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking like, what I can afford to the website, you know, because it's Lens Square is like uh, one of the best uh, websites to learn uh, this kind of uh, stuff in the industry. Mm-hmm. So when I when Momo approached me, I was like, "How I can teach uh, something when I I am one of the students from Lensburg? You know, like I learn from some of the uh, even from the lesson free and everything. You just learn a little bit. So what I'm going to teach mm-hmm. is not here already. And I was literally going to the website and just looking every single course. And I know you have a, they have like a 3D modeling and hard surface courses, but not any focus on what I just did, like vehicle concept design. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my course is uh, because I did it in, and I say that in the course, I did it in my comfort zone just to make mm. it, uh, to to make whatever I do best, you know, because I could force myself. And at the beginning with Mo, when we were talking about to create the vehicle design thing, it was like, let's try to find, you know, something weird, a weird vehicle. And actually, I did... Um, I did a uh, personal stuff with a uh, walker, uh, yeah, walking in uh, like a sea of uh, a sea of stones. I because I was designing the rocks, and then it's the kind of the thought process I always have when I'm making my own personal projects. Like I'm going to make the environment and the vehicle for this environment, and then I'm going to make the character too, just to practice a little bit of everything. Obviously, uh, my in my in my uh, um, honest opinion, the, my best uh, task is like a. Uh, to do is just like the vehicles because it's what i enjoy most normally when i'm you know in zebras uh designing the vehicles or normally i start as i say in the course with uh 
uh, very rough sketch in my mm -hmm. sketchbook, not even, you know, in the iPad. It's normally just like a scribble in my notebook or, you know, in a tissue or whatever. Mm -hmm. I've got a hand just, just to make the shape clear in my mind. Obviously, for the course, I, I polish it a little bit more, but um, normally just like a super rough sketch. Mm -hmm. So what I do is just like, uh, and I just got that to take the shape and I just go directly into Zebras and then the exploration is Zebras. And that's kind of like my way of go. So what I was thinking is just like, I'm going to keep in my comfort zone. So I'm going to make a spaceship because it's kind of like one of my um, best experience in movies was when I was working in Captain Marvel and our art director told me and Pablo Carpio, my co-worker in that movie, we were sharing the office. So he, she told us, uh, hey, guys, I just decided, uh, seeing your portfolios and seeing your skills, I think you both are going to design all the spaces for the Sick for the movie and, and we were like oh my god you know like that's a that's a big honor so working also with alex jay brady uh he was doing like the super initial like kind of my rough sketch in the um, in the tissue i always do before do my design so in this case because it's a, obviously it's a collaborative uh, team and we were trying mm. to share everything we know when uh, working in the movie just to have like a, you know don't be selfish it's not this, this is just my design it's a teamwork mm -hmm. so our important thing was like uh, Alex was designing like the mainly uh, rough uh, ideas in 3D mm -hmm. or 2D and then I was taking them and finalizing them and applying them a little bit of my ideas to into it and it was uh, you know kind of uh, very cool unfortunately you can see the movies like uh, in the movie <laughs> like literally one second like <laughs> one second and it's full of motion blur but okay oh, it's dude. my second <laughs> i i've got in my art station the screenshot you know yeah. you have my I, the good thing is like in the book and uh, marvel uh they put uh you know all of our, our designs out there so mm -hmm. we could show the full design but nice. probably people if they see the designs in my website it's like oh but this this, this is spaceship is in the movie actually one of the ones i designed for the and actually the 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 workflow I was following is the same when I'm teaching in this course. Just mm -hmm. this course is more polished. When I was uh, doing that movie, it was my first time just doing completely 3D vehicles. Be mm. uh, before it was more like uh, just you know do uh, the base and then the like kind of like the first what we do in the first lesson, like yeah. a rough 3D and then paint over. But then I dis I discover and um, uh, how to you know work in zebras more hard surface and how to mm. create everything more uh, readable just to, just to know you know go to Octane click render and have something I don't need to do any paint over maybe marks of paint and everything because when I was um, actually when I was working in Captain Marvel I was learning Octane so it was mm. the, I was a keyboard guy and I was just um, converting myself to Octane while I was working in the project because right. I realized the program was yeah. so good so. So yeah, coming back to the the point of the designs, uh, you can see one of the designs is the scroll ship, uh, and that one you can see more of that design in the end credits of Spider-Man: Homecoming. No, um, Far From Home, the yeah. second Spider-Man movie. So in the end credits, you know the Marvel movies, you have uh, Samuel L. Jackson in an um, alien spaceship. Sorry yeah. for the spoiler. Um, <laughs> it's it's just like a funny scene, so don't don't worry about nothing. And you can see one of my designs is like more clear. All you know in another movie, which is not the yeah. the one I was working on, because obviously it's the Marvel universe, and they are using everything you do for one movie, they mm -hmm. can use it for the other ones, which is always pretty cool. I mean, in terms of like you you can you, you know you work on Captain Marvel, and two years later they are, they are still using your design for the end credits of a Spiderman, which is pretty mm. cool. You know, it's a, a small things, but I mean, for me as an artist, it's always uh, super welcome. So this course is just basically. Uh, me doing my best stuff and actually mm -hmm. the subject I choose and the type of spaceship I made um, is very me. It's, me. it's uh, kind of like a, a mix of uh, Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars and, and you know, and this kind of vehicles because it's what I like. They're rusty yeah. and the chunky feeling a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but this course, you can apply it for anything. I just say it in, in it. It's like if you choose when you have the brief builder, if you choose a military ship, so just take a look of reference and take mm. a look of how military ships work. They are normally more polished. They don't have so many, you know, things around because they are, uh, you know, military and the manufacturer of all of that vehicles. It's just like... Uh, add a little bit of a story when you are designing something, you know, like think about what happened into this spaceship. In my case was what I'm saying in the course too is uh, my, my spaceship, I'm imagining is a bounty hunting one. So that's mm -hmm. why there's 
pieces maybe from another species that you just steal it and they glue it like you know roughly just to make it more faster like they they steal an engine from a jet and they mm. put it in the in, in you know in another spaceship and they kind of they cannot create his own things because i get inspired by one of the um, words han solo says in one of the movies he's like uh this is the fastest uh junk in the galaxy yeah, yeah. and i made my own modifications to it which it was like pretty cool for me when i was you know a kid and my mm. inspirations is always like i'm a star wars nerd and everything and my inspiration was always uh this kind of thing and also uh, vehicles is something I was doing when I was a kid playing Legos all the time. I yeah. like to, you know, design my own spaceship with the Legos. So that's kind of my same. workflow right now. It's kind of the same, but in terms of using Legos, I use <laughs> zebras and I, <laughs> I um, I'm, I'm like a kid in the playground. That's why, <laughs> that's why I was like, new toys. Yeah. Exactly, same principles, yeah. new toys, and and actually, you know, this is a, a, now is a job, which is completely good. Oh, amazing, <laughs> you know? amazing. So yeah, that that's kind of um, uh, not roughly, but that kind of um, inspiration to make mm. uh, this course for me. You know, like this is my playground, is what I do best or what I feel for myself. I do best. I hope people appreciate it. And now these days, uh, you men are rocking it with the advertising in the. Um, in the in the lens square all the lens square team are doing a, you know rock team around it's incredible how you are promoting it and and people are, you know um because even though sometimes you don't have to take all the internet um you know uh, people speaking because you know there's people behind his desk that you don't know and maybe mm -hmm. he can be like oh this is so bad but i didn't hear any bad comment about mm -hmm. it so i'm super 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 happy which like for example when i was doing these test animations uh, there's a lot of people like, why there's no motion blur? And he's oh like, yeah, God. there's no motion <laughs> blur because I'm I'm super I'm a I'm a um, ambitious guy. So when I'm doing something, I need to see the end result quick. You know, like uh, kind of like um, because I'm a you know like like kind of like my job. The concept artist is normally yeah. create uh, an idea quick. So for my own stuff, I'm the same. And I'm I was like, okay, the motion blur means it's going to take two hours for render and i yeah. i want to have the render in 10 minutes so and if they I hear your captain blur marvel anyway. story they'll know that um motion blur is not a good look for you because they hide you yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> because they cannot just stop the frame when i've got the movie on disney plus and see my design because it's a yeah. blur <laughs> and so yeah completely, completely agree <laughs> just to like touch up on the uh course a little bit because um yeah again I've, i love the fact that it's like touches upon your passions and what you enjoy obviously bringing out the best yeah. of your skills as well that's the key thing yeah. um and you've worked on like huge huge projects i mean when exactly. artists are yeah. up and up and coming and they if you ask anybody like what kind of projects would you want to work on your mm -hmm. imdb is pretty much like what what <laughs> what people want to look like um so <laughs> in terms of like your approach and your workflow and you've touched upon it a little bit as well um with your decision making uh -huh. how close is this to how you work on these projects? Uh, but, I mean, obviously, yes, uh, this is depends on the client. This sure. depends on so many things and a studio, a video game company, whatever. Normally, the first thing you have to say is just explain, your, explain them your workflow and how they want to work. Because mm -hmm. I hear stories about uh, some directors, they don't like 3D. And, they li and if you need to do a vehicle design, you need to take your markers and pens and, you mm -hmm. know, go to the jungle. Uh, but uh, in my case, yes, I did vehicles for movies. And as I said, in Captain Marvel, we follow this. It was exactly the same uh, pipeline we follow to, you know, every day when we were designing the spaceships. Mm -hmm. And our art director was completely fine with this pipeline. And the production designer was uh, very pleased too, because these days, actually, the advantage of uh, 3D it's not just uh, like people say, oh, cheating, whatever. No, it's, 3D is incredible. The only fear you have to fa have with 3D is you, you, you can get lost on it and you yes. just can play around because it's like, a, you know, it's, it's like a kid with toys. You're just mm. creating your world. You have uh, now um, a lot of stuff to see it super quick and see the renders in Octane is really, really fast. It's almost real time, you know, yes. if you don't have so much resolution in it. So it's you feel yourself like a pod at some point you know photography director just mm -hmm. taking the good shots of your own scene it's super fun so in terms of uh, efficiency for movies this workflow is very good because you can i mean i don't i don't know from memory how long it takes me to the, the whole process but right. i guess the whole process from the rough sketch 
to the beauty pass uh, with the um, shaders in Octane, you know, until we do the turntable, I think it's almost 10 hours or even less. Mm. So it's, it's like a work, you know, one, one day of work, obviously. Mm. Uh, that's like one day of work if everything gets approved or the your 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 directors or, or uh, art directors, they completely trust on you. But yeah, normally yeah. that's not a yeah, fact because they have different ideas than you and it's completely mm -hmm. fine. It's our job just to solve that idea. So the um, best thing is always to start with the sketches. And then once you present the sketches, you just jump on the, a little bit of 3D and probably show something very quick. But the good thing about um, teaching the course is like the quick turntable in Zebras helps a lot. I use mm -hmm. it. Uh, a lot of times in, in my productions, literally like last Monday, I was uh, doing designs for a video game and I was yeah. just literally, they were not vehicles, but the process was the same. Uh, yeah, it was like yeah. props, but the process is exactly the same. So I was just sending them the, the turntables with the gray clay, uh, the clay renders and they were just making the changes there. And as soon as they approved that, that we moved to the color and they approved the color. And it's a, I think it's a, it's a quick process. I mean, probably there's people who can draw faster, but you mm. know, uh, and you know uh, share the ideas but in my case i use this workflow and i use it in another movie it was released last year like it was called jumanji uh, the next level the mm -hmm. second one with the rock and everybody so i worked on the design of the there's like a blimp uh, i don't know blimp is the right word blimp or zeppelin you know yeah, like I, know, this. yeah I know what you mean yeah okay so i i, I just like literally had like uh white canvas for that one this is like they did a couple of designs in the department the director just changed his mind and uh, my boss at ilm she was like hey, can you just uh, design a you know a blimp and i was working on that for a, a month or something and the process was exactly the one you're looking at the in the mm. in the course and and with the keyframe all now so it's, it was like the first day i just did the 3d and uh, a little bit of the textures because the good thing about uh, this kind of course is like once you have your textures you you already made them you know you don't need to make yes. them again just save exactly. them and then copy paste and adjust a little bit for the your new designs and the, the textures are already done that's that's the good thing about to have a big library so in my case you have to skip when you are working in something like that in my case you have to skip the material part because normally yeah. i've got all my materials it's just like literally 10 minutes of editing every material just for your new design and mm -hmm. and it's done so yeah i i use it uh I use it a couple of times, yes, and I use it for even you know environments or props or or even I don't know yeah. I don't know many characters, but I I follow the same process for every single thing. Mm. In this case, I'm teaching vehicle design, but you have to imagine myself. I I do everything if they make me design a tree. Uh, I design the tree in the same way. Just I pick a rough sketch. I present this rough sketches. Uh, they approve one. I go to Zebras. I just model something quick. I show it, and then we jump to textures, keyframes, or whatever they ask. You know, sometimes they are even happy with just the, with the clay render because they yeah, just want yeah. the shape, and then they deliver the. You know, sometimes if you are working in art department pre-production, normally movies, you just do the rough ideas, and then they move it. Uh, you know, to finalize it, they just hire a VFX company and they do everything. But in the course, you see at the end of the lesson four i believe yeah. or lesson five i believe it is it's lesson five sorry in not lesson four yes sorry i this is uh, five lessons and <laughs> i sometimes forgot. so the end of the octane one let's say mm -hmm. so I, I i say it on the course i surprise myself of sometimes i mean this is a little bit cheeky to say that about my own work but <laughs> it's surprisingly sometimes how realist you know realism looks and we are not using substance or uh mega scans or you know uh, programs made to be super yes. realistic Something yeah. we are using Octane and and texture from Photoshop and it looks looks legit. I mean, I I, I believe my animations are are I'm rendering them in EV because I already have a pretty good asset. So I just take this mm. asset from Octane and I just put it on EV and and move it and and it looks pretty cool. I mean, I mean, obviously it's not quality of a film industry studio, but this yeah. yourself at home and for concept art, you know, for the other department part, it's completely mm. fine. What we are doing in this course i think if that that answers your questions or <laughs> oh no yeah no for sure um i, I think talk too much, by the way no 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 it's all good it's perfect for this so it's all great trust me and what you're saying is um bang on so you, you're fine trust me um and i think you made a you made a good point there um regarding like the how far you need to go um because like you mentioned you could easily go into substance or these more um yeah. precise workflows to really push it out there but you you're not making assets to be 
um, exactly. pushed right towards the end. But like you mentioned, you're there to show the design, show communicate your exactly. idea. And yep. you're looking at all these avenues that really, I mean, like save you time. But I guess mm -hmm. time is the the time saved is a bonus, although it's quite important for what you need to do yep. as a professional. It's more the fact that I guess it's the easiest steps to take that give you less headache to get to your goal. Correct? Yeah, completely. Um, and, yeah, completely agree. And I think, like, I mean, even touching a bit before about how you mentioned about your workflow. And although, it, I mean, even like let's focus on just vehicles for a second. In this yeah. instance, you, your focus is um, a spaceship, right? Yeah. And this could easily apply to anything that has wheels, or like you mentioned, even a walker or yeah, submersible, or anything, anything, right? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. You can. Uh, I mean, if you are picking this course, you have the my brief builder, what, mm. the one I created because I thought it was, you know, the kind of the classic stuff you can make in movies or video games. But yeah. obviously, you have always the option in the brief builder called, saying like other. Just let, let, if you are doing a mentorship, you will have to uh, make me know. Uh, you know, let me know what, what you're going to do, and I can help you. Obviously, mm -hmm. we are doing the mentorships, uh, but. Um, but yeah, you have your option and the brief builder is super useful just to guide you later on in your reference and how you're going to start working. And you can apply this uh, method just like any type of vehicle. Uh, like literally, yeah. I mean, you can just, if you want to do a car, I was like, just imagine the space if I did, just put it for wheels, it's a car, mm -hmm. okay? So, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's just and like, you're doing a car, just study how a car works first yeah. on your reference and take inspiration from them and just feel free on Zebras and jump uh, into make it. I mean, you just can do whatever uh, vehicle you you want to do. I, I said it on the course. I mean, I'm making like a classic mountain hunting spaceship. Mm -hmm. You can make a cargo spaceship. You can make a, a bus driver, you know, a, a space shuttle, whatever you want. I mean, as, as uh, Nick says in the um, trailer, the sky is the limit. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and even again, like, um, let's say you've done one vehicle. So in this case, the spaceship, you've got yeah. that language there you've got the texture like you said you can reuse yeah. even some of the assets you can yeah. reapply that add the wheels on and it looks like that's part of the same universe which can only yeah. be great on certain projects as well so there's a lot of value in this course and i think when people get on it they'll start seeing that yeah. also um you mentioned about environments as well so you actually yeah. make an environment yeah. at the end of yeah. the course as well and the yes. way you do it is like it blew my mind that like how, oh, how really? efficiently you did i was like okay wow like you, when you think you've seen most of the the techniques and hacks, I thought this is pretty this is pretty clever mm -hmm. right here. So so that was pretty neat. Um, yeah, so, it's, it's we yeah. have you already create a lot of assets for the course and 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 the ones obviously comes with the course for you. I mean, if you are buying it, you are f feel free to use all of them mm -hmm. uh, because I just give my all my all my assets I create for the course. I create everything from scratch. But obviously, I've got libraries uh, um I, I didn't use them in the course just to prove you can make everything by yourself yes i didn't i i in the course, i think i didn't use except from the reference in the in the environments you know the photo bash reference yeah uh, I, I didn't use any assets even though i recommend uh, my friends from kitbus uh, just saying hi if they are listening Shout to this. Out. um they are awesome but i didn't use them in the course just to prove you can uh, not because they are they are awesome, obviously, but it's just for people. Maybe they cannot at that point get the kit of assets. You can sure, you can sure. uh, make 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 something quick, and that's what I did in in the last lesson. You have uh, the last lesson is literally a conversion of everything mm. from the first uh, from sketches again. Then we go to zebras again, and then we go to octane again, render, and then everything the ending converts in Photoshop, which is. Uh, good and also teach my actions efficiency which is to be quicker on my presentations yeah. and everything which is i think is going to be helpful for people and i hope you know hope we can see art station full of spaceships at least for, for sure, a yes. couple of times 100 <laughs> percent. make sure you use those hashtag guys um yeah so like um what's your favorite part of that particular process you just mentioned so what technically the lessons because they've all got a value yeah, obviously in their own separate chapters, and um, like you mentioned before, even some productions that anyone might want to work on, because of course, yeah. this is applicable to people maybe wanting to start off, people who are already in the industry, yeah. people trying to enhance their careers. Yeah. Um, so there's like a professional element to this because this is always the intention is to help you get industry ready or to yeah. improve your standing within the industry. Um, yeah, exactly. and the pipeline could stop technically at any one of the lessons, not always right to the end. Um, yeah, but um, which part if any is perhaps your favorite or you get most joy out of my f 
favorite part is always, and this is going to sound a little bit weird, but this when I am in lesson, I believe is lesson three, mm -hmm. in the middle of lesson three, when I already have my shape language of the spaceship uh, already there. And it's like, oh, but you enjoy more the shape or the sketch, you know, when you are just doing the main shape. Mm -hmm. And let's say, I don't like that because it's the difficult part. Is that mm -hmm. like, the most difficult part is just the the graphic shape of your design. Mm -hmm. So like how your spaceship is going to look when it's small, when it's in the shadow, you know, when it's uh, not not in fully detail and we don't care about all the gribbles you put. What is the shape? And if the shape is cool when it's flying, like right now in the videos, I think it looks quite cool when it's moving. And uh, in the ones I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm learning. I'm mean, actually, you know, this curse pu is pushing me to learn new things. Mm. So how it moves and everything, all of that is always fun to do, but it's difficult. You know, it's a struggling. Your brain is like, oh mm. god damn it, maybe this is needs to be smaller. This needs to be mm. bigger. But as soon as I get that sorted. Is my, my best part is when you just start doing all the plating, just putting all the pipes, mm. putting all these small details, which I always say is not the important part because it's not the most important part sure. in terms of um, design language. I mean, add detail is not going to increase uh, your your design skills. It's just mm -hmm. add detail. But for me, it's like very enjoyable because it's like, uh, you know, Lego. like make a yeah. head, you know, it's like Lego. It's just like yeah. add the small details there and just take it care if it's like your little kid, you know, like this, mm -hmm. <laughs> putting him this this pipe here and maybe that thought process. I really enjoy it a lot. But uh, but obviously I, I enjoy every part. But this is uh, like personally, I like when, you know, my client, for example, approves the main shape of the stuff and they told yes. me like, hey, Pablo, just finish it, wrap it up and show us in a keyframe. That's for me the best part because it's kind of like the, easy part i already know how to do mm -hmm. it uh sorry if i the noise i think it's a fox uh, getting killed outside or something oh, no, okay. a, <laughs> we'll use it as a trailer we are yeah we are in the uk <laughs> <laughs> foxes and they make Dude. um uh, weird noises yeah so um um yeah it, that, that part because it's like kind of relaxing for me it's very chill mm. i just put my music on and i just enjoy it obviously i like i i really love the challenges but in terms of mm. a favorite i always like when I, i'm that in kind of finishing the model part is my my best thing and then when you when you see the turntable which is nothing you don't you're not doing nothing you just click render after all your work you click render and then you open the turntable you put it on premiere you just uh, glue all the all the frames and you see yeah. it. That's the best part. Uh, for me, that's the best part. <laughs> Just glue the table and see it. It's like <laughs> there's no there's no process, Pablo. That's the this yeah. rendering. It's like oh yeah, but as, after the render is done, it's like it's you know it's very pleased to see how you know is when it's moving because it, in some kind of way it almost feels real and it's very yes cool. yes. Um, looking upon this stuff like just going through the course myself and even just looking for yeah. your course, your work in general and mm -hmm. even the stuff you've done like after the, i mean the course has been i guess you finished recording the course for for a fair bit now i mean there might have been a few little bits and pieces here and there but most of the yep. hard work has already been done but yet you're still like kicking out these uh, animatics and things like that as well it's like yeah. it looks like for me as an outsider looking in you really immerse yourself in the universes that you build um is yep. that something that you do whilst you're going along like do you um simulate in your brain like where this thing lives and is that something that you do intentionally yeah, or is it like just happens yeah yeah completely completely it's uh i mean when i'm jumping in personal projects and normally when you have something already create is easy i mean always the, the the difficult stuff is the white camera so when you have nothing mm. create something from the white cameras is difficult but once you have your spaceship you can start thinking of who is the character who is uh, living in this spaceship? Mm. Even in the course, you have a character, which the funny thing is a scan of myself, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, because I'm an egocentric. <laughs> you know? uh, it's a scan of myself because I, I, I love to learn techniques. So I was like, yes. I need a scan. I need to learn how to scan somebody. It's like, why I don't scan myself? So it's yep. like, I'm free labor. I, I'm, a, I'm a model just to get a scan. So I just did it with my <laughs> iPhone. But that's another thing. This is like me in my house, pour it and learning new things. Hmm. But um, uh, but yeah, it's like it's very it's very cool when you have your own uh, universe. Even if the influence from my universes normally are very heavy, and you can detect uh, what I like and what I not. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's very very easy when I'm doing something. I'm let's say uh, there's people who is completely original, and when you see their artwork, it's like 
wow, I, this is something so crazy I've never seen before. Mm. And in my case, I am very influent person. So you can mm. see a lot of, uh, in my work, you can see a lot of uh, influences like Moebius, uh, Doug Chang, Ralph Macquarie, yeah. um, HR Hicker. I, you know, the, the famous, all, mostly all the cliches, see yeah. me and everything. <laughs> You know, all the cliches, I am that kind well, of guy. So high quality cliches. Yeah. If you're going to be cliche, yeah. those are the guys you cliche off. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm that, that kind of high quality cliche, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but I, I guess I, I found people, they follow or they find, you know, weird act, artists or, or you know, mm -hmm. independent directors who had their own um, movies and universes, which I, I think they are awesome because normally they give you a lot of uh, inspiration. Mm. So I always take the inspiration of everything I like and I just merge it into my own universe, you know, like trying just to be original in my way and have like the kind of in some kind of way the Pablo's language. Mm. Uh, but it's always you can feel the uh, influences from from, you know, the uh, culture from video games or, sure. or movies or TV shows and everything. Yeah, completely. But I like to fall into my own worlds and, sure. you know, you know, just create this kind of uh, landscapes kind of uh, like I did in the course of the, all the spaceship, they are not in the same place all the time, but it's mm -hmm. like kind of the same planet or different sure, yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Of the same planet. Yeah, you can say, you can see it on the course because it's just like to, to sell the idea, to sell your design is like, yeah, this spaceship is in this world. For example, I don't show it goes to the space, but maybe it can go to the space. Yeah, you know, yeah. I didn't do any keyframe in the space, but I can do one. The only thing is like for the course, I didn't do any space keyframes because I thought it's like, it's, they are kind of the easy ones. It's just like mm. put a planet on the background and that's it. Yeah. So I just decided to do more um, land keyframes because they are more interesting for students to learn yeah. than just put a planet on the background. Which is completely fine. Uh, Paul does it, and he's and he's the best. So <laughs> this is amazing. Um, so obviously this this what we just mentioned now is more linked to when you're doing personal projects. Yeah. What does that does that ever come into account when you're doing work for clients, or do you is there like more strategy involved, or is it kind of similar? Yeah. But obviously the brief always wins, and what the yeah. art director says always has to be the final decision. Like, what are the differences for you? Yeah, the difference is like when I'm doing personal work, you know, you are, you're your own director, you are the mm -hmm. ruler and you are the one who chooses everything and you can do any changes. When you're working with clients, uh, I have to say uh, there's clients and clients, obviously. There's some mm -hmm. clients, they have like uh, ideas very close and they want to stick to some style. And sometimes if you go a little bit, um, you know, far from that style, they will let you know, like, Pablo, this is great, beautiful, but uh, too much, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. dancing that thing. But uh, when we were designing Captain Marvel, there was like an alien planet and it was not designed yet. So we had a chance just to put our spaceships in weird situations just to sell mm. the design like uh, to the director because the script was uh, not finished yet. So they were like maybe, you know, they were really open to new ideas, which is always super cool. And, and thanks to that, you know, you can immerse yourself in this kind of universe you are creating, even though it's client work. But obviously... Think about client work is not your IP. It's not yours. Mm. You're working for them. So uh, not saying like take uh, put all, obviously you have to put effort and and just hit the points every time. Yeah. But uh, don't fall in love with it just in case, you know. Fall in love partially when you're working on them yeah, and when yeah. you see the movie, but then you can have one second. So <laughs> one second of glory in the cinema. So <laughs> think about and because I remember we weren't de designing the alien for the yeah. Kree fighters in the movie, and literally it's one second in the movie, it's oh one second to the water, and that's it. <laughs> but uh, when we were designing it, we were thinking like, oh, we should do a keyframe of them, maybe having you know uh, breakfast, you know, in a different planet or whatever. And the cre the directors they were like super open to make all of that. The thing yeah. is like obviously maybe there's no more budget or it's you know Hollywood movies and they are they have a lot of changes and. They always have to stick to, you know, um, the time and the budget. So that's the issue with, you know, mm. even though they are big productions, uh, sometimes our ideas can be a little bit far, far. But then like the... say, look at the flip side. Um, okay. It was only in the, the film for, for a second, obviously for the reason that you mentioned, but you still yes. had that experience of being able to really go to that level with that, that piece and, and that, that particular, yeah. that particular project. So, mm -hmm. um, Regarding, like, say, um, we've, we've spoken about how you work um, with your personal work, and obviously the the limitations or the the the, um, the boundaries that can happen when you work in professionally. Um, 
do you would you say working for clients and things like that has that how has that affected you as an artist like do you, would you say what has it given you that you wouldn't have gotten if you just did your own stuff um i have to say what affects me as an artist with client works normally it's sometimes obviously obviously there's a task and task uh, when you're doing a movie movie have like a lot of things to do yeah. or video games they have a lot of things to design and almost i enjoy because i am you know i i i, I always say thank you for, because i i i'm you know my, my job is just create things and it's awesome mm -hmm. it's like what i always uh, wanted to do and coming from a country who doesn't support art too much from mm -hmm. spain they don't have like a big um in terms of concept art and everything when i was starting even though it was, it was not far away but it, in less than three years is more common than when i was starting because when right. i was starting people felt like oh maybe you should go to comic books uh, movies or video games are not from this country you know that you yes. don't have almost companies in spain i i think i can count with my fingers on the hand on one hand i uh, had oh. the big, big companies in spain <laughs> like literally four um and they are in barcelona and madrid mm -hmm. and, and around uh so it's like yeah the, the the people they are not going to it's not it's not the reality this the reality you know culture teach you like they are not going to hire you because you are young and you yeah. don't have experience and the only people who they hire is uh older people which is a lie but yeah. it's what is what you've been taught in uni i mean in my mm. uni when i was in fine arts and i was even though it's fine arts is a completely different career from this the only thing we share is the skill of drawing and everything yeah. the rest is kind of different obviously the artist side is the same but yes the kind of uh, goes of that career is just more for galleries and and be a contemporary artist more than a concept mm. or illustrator so the the teachers there i mean not saying the teachers were bad but they were like you see in their reality like hey man this is like uh you know no you're you're not in the us you're not in the uk or or yemeni and there's no too much companies of that here how they mm. why they should hire you when they can hire you know something elder and better than you Mm. So you're in culture wise, you already grown up thinking like, oh, this is so, you know, this kind of goals are difficult to get. Yeah. But that's why we, we this Internet is awesome and the freelance options are awesome. And talk with people is the best thing you can do, because I want to get my first job in the industry. Uh, I was 20, 20 years old. Wow. I was in my second year of career. So on, the, on my uni, I was in the second year. So I was 20 and I was. And they were completely fine because they they were looking for talent. Our talent in terms of uh, technically, you can do the job. You know, yes. Not talent of because talent is you know is this famous discussion about talent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes in the industry you have to do uh, not as fun task as for example the first days in a movie, which is completely open. Mm -hmm. uh, the first days in a video video, video games, the blue sky when you are exploring the world, uh, when you are have like completely freedom obviously is better i mean i think for any artist i mean maybe there's a, a different people who thinks different than me and it's completely fine you know about like people maybe they prefer something more close and not add or that open because they know how to do and nail something uh you know like i need a building with 400 windows and this type of design with this reference it's completely fine you know it's like if you prefer that uh, you know it's better uh but for me i like when you have more creativity you know when they are like yeah this is the rough idea we have uh just just you know you have three days or you have a one day and a half to just give us a couple of sketches and then we see your ideas and then you, you are like that again the kid on the playground uh you're going to do whatever you want with the universe they they give to you you know they give you the power of a nice ip like marvel or um you know big movies and you have you in in a small time you have this power to create you know and and you know actually help uh, a big team uh, of people to just later on to create that in the big screen or in the in the PlayStation or Xbox mm -hmm. you know so yeah sometimes when i'm working in task a little bit more in some kind of way boring task you mm -hmm. know uh, sometimes when you are in for example ILM it's a BFX company, so there's some a lot of uh, BFX concept work, which mm -hmm. means it's like you have the plate and you need to design what is, what's in the background of the plate. They yeah. send you the uh, early concepts or the early designs they did, so they want to stick with that style. So you are more take that ideas and just apply them into the background for that that scene. It's fun, it's good to do, but you know it's not as creative as you know when you're in, in the starting of the project or mm -hmm. when you 
there's no, for example, design of any spaceship. Uh, so you have to do it from scratch. Sometimes when you're working in BFX, they give you already a design and you just finish it up, which is completely good. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about working in BFX is, is very please later on in the movie because you know it's going to be in the movie and you know it's going to appear in the movie. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's going to be kind of 100% what you just did because you are doing almost the final part, yes. not the initial part when you're doing pre-prod. But yeah, in terms of creativity, when I've got this kind of slightly more um, not exciting tasks, let's call it like, because they are not boring. They are like mm. just exciting, less exciting. Uh, I just come back home and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make something awesome now. Nice. <laughs> you know? <laughs> on my own like oh, i'm going to make something awesome today and uh, for me and just share it on instagram if people like this it, it's fine if people doesn't like him it, it's fine anyway i just like it <laughs> it's all it's for me so i just share it because you know maybe people want to see it but it's uh it's something cool i'm making you know uh myself for myself normally sick um it's fine Thing regarding is, is, uh, um the course obviously there's a lot of yep. 3d in there obviously you use photoshop yep. Uh, to bring it together and there's a few yep. and basic octane pretty much is photoshop yeah. zbrush and octane it, right it, yeah um, it's a it's a paper let's say paper or 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 whatever you use for sketch yeah yeah Zebras, Zebras octane and then finish it up on photoshop yeah so like for beginners um because we always get yeah. asked a lot of, whenever a course comes out um a lot of people yeah. who are maybe established know about workflows know exactly how to Go with this and some people are quite yeah. new to this and thinking how, how do they how do they um approach this in terms of yeah. like, i guess like with 3d for some people who mm. don't use 3d um Ever. i mean like, i guess we've all been there right when we've tried mm -hmm. 3d and thinking whoa there's so much to figure out it's quite intimidating yeah. and then you also think that you need a lot of expensive gear because yeah you know there's all these softwares and hardwares yeah. and gps yeah, and then you open Zebras and the, the UI, it's what the fuck is this, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> and like, like this UI. And uh, when you get comfortable, I say in the group, when you get comfortable, it's, it's the best thing in the world. But until you know every single button because yes. they have like a different name, you seem to have, you know, layers like in Photoshop or, or, mm. or any other program, you have a layer. Layer is another thing which we use it in the course, but it's not the thing you normally think about layer. You know, yeah. it's a layer, probably it's a. But layers in zebras are subtools, and the layers are another different thing, <laughs> which is to do another <laughs> completely different thing in zebras, which is very interesting. I we, we have a layer uh, option actually. The layers just to make the kind of uh, uh, how the wings are going to move and mm -hmm. the legs is spreading and everything, just to keep everything in one design. So doesn't have uh, uh, you don't need to have like a multiple FBXs or something like that. So it's it's pretty cool the layers in zebras, but yeah, the zebras when you, if you're a completely beginner or you come from uh, 3D Maya, you open zebras, you're like, what is this? <laughs> the, the, the first, uh, what is this? Light box, yes. you know. <laughs> so yeah, and, in the I, I will say we tackle yeah, but it's continue. Sorry, sorry. Oh no, no, carry on, carry on. No, I mean, I mean, just like if you are a completely beginner and you come, just like I will say, uh, the only weak um thing i've got in the course is this photoshop i assume if you want to be a concept artist you already know the basics of photoshop even though i explain them while i'm doing them mm -hmm. uh but it's not as detailed as the zebras part the zebras part mm. i just explain every single tool i use in short videos which i think i found that um that's like what momo uh, was suggesting me to do and i found it very good because it's short videos so if you need uh any tool you just go to that video it's yes. like two minutes you saw it you check it and you don't need to be spending two hours just looking an hour yeah. video and trying to look where where was this part so um, zebras and octane you got them from the from nothing so you come mm. from uh you know paper and paper and 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 markers you you you're completely uh, good with this course because i explain zebras uh you know from from zero obviously if you have an intermediate level or you are already in industry or something like that it's going to be uh you know way easier for you because you already maybe understand how 3d works this is kind of something i always say like when you first touch 3d you don't know how it works mm -hmm. or how you know the, the thinking of 3d and the names is it's a, it's a different language you know it's like learn it's like for me, learn English, you know, like when I was learning English, it's a different language. So mm -hmm. learn 3D is a completely different language from 2D painting and drawing because the, the ways we talk are bullions uh, and all of that kind of words. You don't know what it is until you 
see how it works, you practice and you are like, you click, you know, like, ah, okay, ah, okay. Because I remember the first time I opened, I think it was 3DS Max. I, I didn't know how to make e even the cube, you know, the default <laughs> cube. And it's just a button, but yeah. you don't know. It's like, uh, uh, it's called a mesh. It's called a primitive. What is, why, why is it called a primitive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like primitive is just like the people in the caves. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, yes, a so, good point. It's like, if you treat it like a language, the same yeah. thing can have different words in only one language, let alone trying to learn a new language. So once you kind of figure yeah. that out, um, it's pretty transferable across different packages. And with that, yes. um, let's say someone who's maybe saying, I don't have, Z I don't have ZBrush or Octane. Okay. Like what would you recommend for them to use as an alternative? Um, to perhaps still follow along with the course, obviously not precisely because um, it's still not going to be your exact steps, but what could they potentially yeah. use as a substitute? Yeah, I, I've got a of, yeah, actually this is interesting because I've got a couple of people asking me like, uh, are you going to touch the Blender side? And I'm like, yeah. no, because this is my workflow and this is the workflow I've been using for years. Even Blender was already out mm. and not saying Blender is a bad program. I, I use it and, and now I'm, you know, jumping into it and i'm doing i'm learning how to do these crazy animations and and step at the scenes but honestly for me it's still a little bit slow mm. and you're, you're going to be like palo blender is the fastest one is like yeah it's the fastest <laughs> thing and all of that is awesome and obviously you can apply the instead to use octane you want to use cycles use cycles for the rendering yes. and i'm fine with it you know like uh uh, maybe we are get used to it. You don't want to pay Octane, which is you know like the good thing of uh, Blender, which is in the mouth of every everybody these days. Yes. Even me, uh, it's it's free. That's a, yes. that's a good thing. For Zebras, I think they have a the you know the trail option, which I think is going to be very good if you don't have the program. Just have like a, I think it's thirty days trail or 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 yeah, even. I believe so. It's thirty days. They've still got a subscription as well, so you can kind of like get it for maybe a couple of months and then cancel it. Exactly. You have a affordable. The good thing about these days is uh, everything is quite affordable in some kind of way because you can have Octane. For me, I'm not using the latest one, even though I'm using mm -hmm. the um, Octane Eight. I think it is mm -hmm. before they jump to subscription. So in my case, I just uh, have the Octane I paid literally three years ago, and I'm yeah. still using that license. I will have to jump at some point, but <laughs> but. Uh, First of all, I'm making the course with a computer, which is not the most powerful computer you can find mm. these days. It's a computer, it's a laptop. It's not even a, a dock, you know, it's a laptop. I'm using a laptop and it's a gaming MSI with, a, a, I think it's a 32 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah. I mean, it was a pretty good one back in time, but when I was doing the course already, it's a little bit outdated because now okay. you have new cards and everything is uh, new. So it's a, it's, not, it's a modest, let's say, for mm. the industry. Standard, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, it's a thousand bucks computer or something mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, I'm making the course and I'm making, I'm working with it every day. Yeah. Obviously, when I was at ILM, they provide me with a computer, but uh, now I'm freelancing. I'm keep using this one. I'm looking forward to upgrade it, but uh, for now, I'm fine with it until I burn it. I think I'm going to keep using it. Yeah. So, so yeah, in terms of uh, the 3D things and and all of that. Yeah, you have this uh, Zebra's uh, monthly subscription, which is not too much. I think it's nine or twenty bucks per month, and you just can rent it. Uh, you know, a couple of months, learn the software, and then maybe you know you can keep using it. And if you like it, because uh, believe me, if you make this course, you are going to like it because it's mm. so quick <laughs> and the results are like surprising for you. Just just keep going with Zebra's, and if you feel you can approach this with another three program like three D Code or Blender. Uh, or Maya or Cinema 4D or the, whatever program you use, uh, it's completely fine. You can follow the course because you just, you just see the lessons, see how I work and hear what, I, uh, you know, what I'm saying when I'm designing it. So your designs are going to have the same language as I'm explaining to you. The process is going to be maybe different. I recommend, obviously, to follow my process because I don't know all the softwares. So if somebody um, are doing a mentorship, they, they are going to use 3 code. I don't know how to use 3 code. Yeah, so... Yeah. Please, if, if, if you are doing this course, just make sure you stick with the, uh, I mean, just, just to, to learn more, uh, you know, rent, uh, you just rent the Zebras or an Octane for a couple of months and this, and then you, 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 you're fine with it. I mean, you're not, you don't need to buy the whole license. Mm -hmm. Like before you need to pay hundreds uh, or thousands of bucks for programs. These days is like you, you have the option just to get it for a couple of months. Yes. Like I'm doing right now for, 
for I'm learning After Effects now to make my um, actually to make the spaceship of the course flies around. Mm -hmm. So I just paid like three months of After Effects to learn it. If in three months I get tired of doing animations, I just stop paying. It's fine. Yeah, nice and flexible. And I'm glad you touched on hardware as well because that was going to be my next question. Um, yes. And and I think it's great that you're using uh, quote unquote um, a modest uh, setup, and yeah. it just shows that workflow and how you use your tools is key <laughs> rather than having like you know some uh, beastie, powerful yeah. exactly because that yeah. that's not where the quality comes from that just helps you do more yeah. things quicker um and the fact that you are using it on high level projects and i mean you can look at the results <laughs> of the course itself like that just yeah is the best endorsement that the workflow is the key thing here yeah, the workflow and, and the design skills are the key because at the end you, you can deliver a, 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 if you draw very good, you can deliver a drawing with a pen and paper. Mm. So and you don't need a computer to make that. So in the terms of the course, uh, I think with um, Zebras is, even though it feels like you're moving a lot of polygons because of the configuration Zebras have, actually you can work in the core, uh, you can work in Zebras, I mean, before my, computer the laptop i've got i had uh, another one and it was kind of a modest computer and i didn't have any nvidia or mm -hmm. intel or something. i was like you know this 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 world of um computers you have like nvidia amd and all of that yeah so i was always going to the cheapest one you know like the cheapest one who everybody tells you like don't buy the cheapest because <laughs> it's going to burn you, yeah. you can burn and and actually uh, that happens to a friend of mine he was using a program and the graphic card just like hits like i know, I know 95 degrees and it oh melts literally <laughs> melts <laughs> <laughs> in the computer but uh, i think zebras is a program it can be handled with um with a modest computer almost I, i've seen people with you know uh cheapest com i mean computers using zebras so yeah mm. zebras is a good program because it's not using 3D is this 2.5 thing, 5D. Yes. So the things you are looking at, Zebras are not. A, it's a it's a weird concept. It's, it's, I don't know how to explain it very good. And maybe there's some expert to explain it better. But it's kind of like when you are moving the um, the the um, the object or the the sculpt you have in Zebras. When you are moving it, it's kind of 3D. But when you stop it and you are working on it, it's kind of 2D and yeah, it's yeah, trans yeah. 3D yeah. mesh. It's a weird thing, okay? And also, in the course, you will have it in the um, Zebras optimization. I explain about documents. So in my case, because I've got a, I've got a modest laptop, but then I've got a 4K screen, okay? Mm. So it's not so, something I will recommend because if you have a, you know, a computer like me, a 4K screen is going to have a struggles with the... I have sometimes, now I've found after months, found to optimize everything and everything was fine. But at the beginning... Mm. Because I had like 4K and my computer was not, the graphic card was not getting that 4K very good. Um, with Zebras, mostly because uh, the, the file I was using, it was 4K. You have the option to reduce your your document in Zebras. So that means like you are going to lower the resolution of the thing you are looking at. So maybe you can, you have to work with a little bit of anti-aliasing anti anti and a little bit of, uh, you know, pixelated. But yeah. It, work faster and actually when i i've got zebras i just uh have it in the documents um part in the lesson two when i'm talking about documents you just change the result of the, your document in zebras and and the, trust me the polygons are not the important thing if you have less resolution you are going to work more fluid than having uh you know less polygons and also mm -hmm. you have if you need to move quicker you have the option of um in the in one of the sites you have the dynamic and you have the option to put solo so you only when you work on something you only see the sub tool you have and yeah. if you have um sorry if this is a little bit technical but it's just to help That's people so just be yeah. you know they either thinking to buy the course but you know they need to listen to this first you have the option just to put dynamic one so each time you are rotating an object on zebras it's going to instead to rotate the object in 3d it's going to just rotate the subtle you have, and then when mm -hmm. you stop rotating, it's going to give you everything back. Sometimes, you know, if it can be a little bit, if you have a, um, if if you have a modest uh, model, it's fine. You don't activate that option. But if you have a very heavy model, even though in the course I touched the part of, we are going to make a vehicle, but the vehicle is not even super heavy in polygons. I think the vehicle is is one. If I don't remember bad, 
is not even two million polygons, which is not too much, you know. This uh, when you have in series, you have people with hundred million polygons, <laughs> and I don't know how the the, the series is moving that, you know. In our course, I explain how to optimize the model to be faster, and that's a key thing I always say when you are working on something and you have not the best gear. Just learn how to optimize the scenes, you know, like just decimate or try to, uh, if you have things you are not, you are, because sometimes you have the geometry inception, you know, you hide things inside the model <laughs> because you want to delete it because you are lazy and I do that yeah. all the time. Uh, so <laughs> so just, just make sure you delete that and these polygons are not going to be there. You are not looking at them. We are not doing polish it. Uh, in the course, we are not creating, uh, what did you say? Uh, good topology models, you know, yeah, where yeah. we are focused on something cool and language design. So we are focusing on the idea and the thing. The model on the render looks, looks, you know, looks. if you ask somebody, they can be like, oh, yeah, probably they have a good topology because the render looks good. And then you yeah. turn the right frame and you kill three generalists, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I, I, we, I always try to optimize the... The models, even though I'll, even though if some, the day of tomorrow I just buy um, I don't know six graphic cards or whatever, <laughs> I will be optimizing the models because that's going to first thing when you have to export import. Don't care if you have the best computer in the world. That's a software thing, and if the software have a slow export uh, option, it's going to yes, be slow. And exactly. Cipress, exactly. Export in Cypress. If you have everything is split in, I, I have to say, if you separate everything in different subtools. And each subtool is like uh, less polygons. It's better if you have everything in one subtool. So mm -hmm. the, ex the export is going to be quicker. So just try and make sure to optimize is one of the lessons. Actually, I will. I have to say it's like the, maybe the the boring video of the whole course is that one when I'm talking about optimize the model because mm -hmm. it's kind of when you already have the design, you want to put it on Octane, you want to see how it yeah, looks. Yeah, yeah. You want to be amazing of the next step, but. If you have the time and you're smart, optimize it first. Spend 15 minutes of your life cleaning the model, and then go to the and then go to the yeah. make the. It's 15 minutes. It's 15 minutes to optimize. You know, clean everything you don't see. Um, make sure you have uh, you don't have hidden things around, and just the export and the and then in Octane and everything, you're, you're going to be way quicker because if you import a model with millions of polygons in Octane, even though Octane is super fast. At the beginning, the import, just import the model, is going to be very slow. Yeah. So optimize the, the things, and you will be able to work in anything with almost whatever computer. Obviously, you cannot use a tablet, but, <laughs> but any, <laughs> any computer these days can work. Yeah, yet. Yeah. And for Octane, the same. I think Octane, the, actually, they released the new Octane, have a, uh, in AMD graphic cards, uh, you know, compatible so you now that yeah now before it was only nvidia and now i yeah. think you can have and i think um just in case just check it out before uh buy it Disclaimer. if you don't yeah. have a NVIDIA card but i think i believe you can um you can use it with uh, because mac doesn't have nvidia and now you can you have octane in mac also so octane and was in touching, touching upon um like say if if someone's taking the course then maybe they get too caught up on just like how high the quality should be um this is focused on concept art so you could always have something not polished but crude and you can always yeah. make it Paint. sexy in photoshop afterwards so yeah, exactly photoshop um, the key can be... thing is the design and getting the stuff out there um so just to summarize on the course element um yeah if there was one thing that you would love to see students take away um mm -hmm. from the course what would it be for you if if there's something i will take away no, no. For, so, so let's say students taking your course. Um, yes. From a personal perspective from yourself, what would yes. you like to see students like take the most from your course? Like one key, one key what thing. See is actually something I say. So I'm sorry to repeat myself for the people no, who are going to take your course. You are going to listen to this twice. <laughs> it's just like if you try to make all the things as I did for the course, in terms of like I'm going to give. I know it's because it's it's a natural thing. So. I'm saying like create your own assets, but I'm giving you my assets. So why should I create my own assets? You know, mm -hmm. you know my um, mm -hmm. what I'm going. So if you create your own assets for the instruments part, you create your own textures for Octane. You create your own um, materials in Octane later apart from the textures. The, the 
you are going to learn so many things with that. Then later on, when you see another course and you see a YouTube video or a tutorial, you are going to, you know what is going on. So imagine you have like, you have my panel in texture. So I create some panels in Photoshop, literally painting them by hand, just using texture brushes and textures from internet. Super simple, you know? Panels, you design the panels. But when you're designing the panels, you have to think like, oh, what I should put this? Or you're thinking on proportions and everything. So I would love to see if uh, almost all the students, they create a big libraries for themselves, mm -hmm. you know, on their own, not just giving them the stuff. Because I have to say, I believe, I, I, I leave this when I was working on ILM. We are a team and I don't have any problem to share my knowledge with mm -hmm. them. Uh, share my access and everything because we are a team and I, I I have no problem with it. The thing is like, if you learn how to do it, the way you realize yourself, how cool was that? It's 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 better than just like, oh, can you give me this asset? It's like, yes. why you don't do yourself? You know, like, yeah. Paolo, can you give me, I remember, I'm not going to say names, but uh, <laughs> even though I love them and they know, if they listen to this, they know, they, are, they, 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 they know and they are going to text <laughs> me like, hey, Paolo, you were me, myself. <laughs> but when I arrive at ILM, I just create my own library. I just arrived there and I saw, you know, there's libraries of other people. So I was looking at, uh, you know, what I can grab some, you know, from uh, materials or textures or something. But I just arrived. I just bring my thing. I just put it there. And somebody asked me like, oh, you already create this amazing library. And I was like, yeah. It's like, can I grab it? And I was like, yeah. But, you know, if you created it yourself, you are going to feel better, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you're going to learn it's like yes you're going to learn how the textures work you're going to learn how to create normal maps you're going to mm -hmm. create learn how to create roughness map uh, how it works instead to just grab something from each other i mean this is for the learning process what i mean is if you are learning it's good if you spend all the time in the world you have spend it to create everything to understand every single part of the course uh, and create it i mean obviously if you are in a rush or you want to learn quicker or I don't know, um, you're just curious, use the stuff I'm giving to you. Like mm -hmm. the character, for example, I don't explain how to model a character. I just create a character for everybody and everybody can use it. And and it's actually, you know, in different poses. So you just can grab the character and, and, and put it in your scene and it's going to look good. Obviously, feel free to use it. But if you learn how to do it by yourself and you have your own library, actually you will know yourself the assets. So that's why in the course, I'm so fast because I create my own assets and I know what I've got because I made them, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not opening a library and checking, okay, I've got all these gribbles, I've got all these pipes, I've got all these plates, i got all these textures. And then when you're working, you don't remember them because you just saw them quickly. Yeah. Because but if you made them, you remember, you remember every texture you create because it's yours, yes. you know? It's your, your memory. So you just go quick. It's the same thing when I'm in the last part of the course, when I'm taking my, uh, mostly my smokes, I've got like a library of uh, PNGs uh, with uh, transparent uh, layers of smoke and sparkles, lens flares. I just clean them just to drag and drop. But when I'm working in a, for a client, I know already I've got that in my library. So I just go there and drag and drop. Boom. I don't need to create it. I need to make it. So for the students, just like try to, Try to, even though in the homework, I'm saying like you can create just at least model five pieces or 10 pieces or 15 pieces of for your kit pass later uh, to use it as a, um, to, to use it as an insert mess later on in the Cypress process. And then you can just use mines, obviously. But if you make them yourself using your reference, the visual library you're going to keep in your mind, I cannot give it that to you, you know? Mm. Like that's going to be something you create on yourself. And that's kind of, something is going to give you speed later on with a client because the client is going to ask you, can you give me this? And sometimes you have a short, uh, you know, even though I love to search for reference, but sometimes yeah. you have like a really short time. So because you made all this study before of reference, a study how the shapes work, sometimes you just can go there and jump directly mm -hmm. to the design without any reference. Just open Cibres and start working because you already know what style they want because you studied before doing your kit bash and you're doing your um, assets for the course. So, yeah, I, I will say that's that's kind of uh, what I would love to see if people mm -hmm. does that or they just grab my stuff I make for them. You feel free to use it. It's, if you pay the course, it's yours. But <laughs> it's better if you make it by yourself. <laughs> Sick. Dude, I'd love to know more about your origin story. So, my? Like, your origin or... story. So um, what got you into art? Uh, um, I, you I mentioned Lego and stuff earlier. Like you mentioned that you've always been into 
just creating yeah. and building things. But like, what yeah. would what was that moment that started it all off for you? I mean, in in my case, I'd never been like uh, these kind of people. Like they were doing a uh, direction like oh, I want to be an industry designer or mm -hmm. engineer or tech people or I don't know. I, I was always in the art side since I was a kid. I loved drawing. Obviously, I think almost everybody who works in this uh, kind of industry, obviously there's uh, people who don't and they are like successful uh, as no one. Like Yama, Yama started uh, a little bit late and he's mm -hmm. the best. Yep. So um, in my case, I was since I was a kid, I was drawing, drawing, drawing all the time. I love to have to see uh, what I said in the course. Actually, I love it to see the making offs of movies. Yes. I, it was something something I really liked the behind the scenes and how the movies made and and how is the magic behind you know every Lord of the Rings, uh, Star Wars, Indiana Jones and everything. Mm -hmm. I the good thing when I was a kid, um, my parents always give me the movies for my birthday. So you know when I, I was growing up in the DVD times. Yes. So when DVDs was coming, I mean we start having less. I remember my la 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 last VHG. Uh, uh b h b uh, sorry i don't VHS. know how to no, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah the vhs i had for my birthday was uh lord of the rings and the fellowship of the ring that was my Sick. last last then the next ones was all of them um dvds and the good mm -hmm. thing of dvd they come normally with the behind the scenes yeah. almost every uh, almost every movie you know with a little bit of art related in the industry thing mm -hmm. they were uh, behind the scenes and i remember just like see the movie and then the whole week repeat the behind the scene video yes. over and over. I like to see all the maquettes, all the drawings, just Lucas pointing, you know, <laughs> a wall of drawings up for me was like, I was like, oh, so there's people who, you know, who paint and yeah. and, movies and, and that's a thing, you know, like I was thinking like, ah, that's not a thing, you know, yeah. but I'm thinking that's not a job. I thought like that's a friend of George Lucas who was yeah. making that. <laughs> <laughs> like this is on the I'm just making it and then he was going to work I don't know yeah. <laughs> I didn't know how, how cinema works obviously yeah. when I was a kid so in terms of origin since I was a kid I was a very film kid I also had like a passion for stop motion since I was super super cool. little when I was very very little my uh, my dad had like a webcam and and that webcam it was um, you know you can make pictures with the webcam yeah so when I was a kid, I was taking pictures of my own legals and making my own in a very bad way movies <laughs> you know i someday i will share i will share my my stop motion movies i made yeah, with my legal uh, i was i will send you the uh the, the link later it's uh, i think i've got it up <laughs> it's so fun to see so i was doing my own movies you know with um you know looking the trailer of the you know the new video games and i was recreating that trailer with okay. my legos really bad but uh because i did i never been like um uh, in a you know a rich family or something, so uh, yeah. everything. Well, I was using what I what I get, so yeah. I had the the lucky to have like a a lot of legos because legos were cheap before. Now no, <laughs> uh, for kids now. I mean the yeah, kids not, lego they only can have one or two. Like yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid, they were like super cheap, so it was like the perfect present, and then get expensive, expensive. Uh, so yeah, I was always focus on something related to cinema like since i was very very little and then when i was in high school obviously i was a skater so just let's avoid that part of my life <laughs> uh, uh then, like, i want to be a skater i would just you know be writing my my thing and then <laughs> i hit um i you know almost uni and i had to choose a career and i choose anything related to editing it was more focused on editing you know after okay. effects premiere and be an editor or something like that because i knew that's a job Yes. Uh, and yes. concept that was not a job. Again, mm. for me, I was like, George Lucas was asking Doug Chang, can you yeah. make this for me? And <laughs> um, for free, you know, like, <laughs> you like yeah, that. Yeah. that. And same for, for me, the magic cards, for example, they come from a fabric of magic, you know, like, yes. That's yeah. <laughs> a drawing. For me, there was not a drawing. I thought like it was a computer making them. I, yeah, honestly, when I, was a kid, I was looking at the magic cards, and in my mind, it was like a computer. A computer is the one who makes the magic. They just yeah. put information and as soon and as the same way they do the movies, for me, it's like, you know, super smart people just put in math in yes. a computer and it comes out. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized it was a career and I really dig into it. So I just uh, thought like, okay, I need to get a job. And I was, I, I was 19 
uh, I was 18 when I was starting Photoshop and mm -hmm. I was doing Photoshop and After Effects. So I did a course of Photoshop, like just Photoshop, you know, uh, to make, to know, to know how to retouch pictures, to, mm -hmm. you know, erase every, every single spot from your face, <laughs> uh, make yourself, you know, make yourself blue, make yourself like an, uh, an, an avatar character, yeah, yeah. make yourself like a zombie you know but like photoshop things not not nothing related to the industry and then when i was finishing that course my teacher showed me what concept art was and i was blowing up you know like wow because i remember playing i was playing league of Legends back in time and mm -hmm. uh, and, and for me again i thought like the the splash arts they have in the main the main websites for me it was a 3d model uh yes. made for um from you know math yeah <laughs> So for me, even though, even though when I was doing Photoshop and I was studying Photoshop, for me it was a 3D model made from math and magic, you know. So from a super smart people, it's only one guy in the universe doing that. For me, yeah. that was me. So I was learning the studios, and then I bought the. Actually, I bought the Last of Us uh, art book, mm. and I was blowing up, and I was you know like wow, this is incredible. How how the hell they are you know these guys they know how to draw cars. And every single detail yes. of the car, <laughs> all the grass, all the everything is incredible. And then late, years later, you know, they are using photobas, they are using yeah, 3D. Yeah. But that was that comes like literally years late, like a year later. I knew because at, at the beginning, I thought like everybody was, you know, pixel painting everything, mm -hmm. you know, like because I was thinking like, okay, so Photoshop is good for painting, but you have to paint everything and yes. not Use, not even making the brush bigger you know yeah, if you have yeah. a brush you need to paint everything with the brush like you are doing a canvas because it for even for me in my mind use a bigger brush was cheating and if yeah, you use yeah, a big yeah, yeah. Big, the brush, it was cheating for me so i had to use the brushes i download from internet on this <laughs> you know the site they were and if if the canvas was really big I, I, i'll be spending so much time just painting mm. So yeah, that's my origins. Then I realized everything. Of, uh, then I realized a friend of mine was getting a job in El Ranchito, and he told me a little bit of what my painting is. And again, I thought my painting was that kind of you know old masters did in, yeah, in yeah. the class. And I had the opportunity to see some of the original matte paintings. We have some of them. They had in the ILM office in London. They have the hook Sick. ones with the island. They are pretty awesome. And then yeah. when I went. San Francisco to visit the guys there, which is one one of the best days ever. Just to meet the whole Lucasfilm department team and everything wow. was incredible. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was incredible that day and see the whole museum they have with all the matte paintings from the movies. The they had like the Die Hard matte painting with the the Die Hard two with the, yeah. the plane. It looks like a picture, and then you get wow. close and they and they're loose brush strokes. You know, it's a mm. very loose painting, but it's just like if you put the camera and it looks real, it's fine. You don't need to yeah. detail everything. So at the same time, I was learning matte painting. But in my in my mind, again, matte painting was for matte painting. So I was just using the techniques you use for matte painting for doing matte painting. And then concept art was only painting. Yeah. So I still having that, you know, separate mindset. So I was just doing matte, matte paintings. And at the same time, I was doing concept. Then I remember I just bought uh, Aitan's Gum Road and I saw how he was applying uh, photos into the painting. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay, this is the game. And now I learn need to learn how to do that. Um, it was a, it was not. I had to say I I've been you know super. Uh, I'm I'm a very as I tell you like I need to see the results very quick. Yeah. So yeah. even when I'm learning, I was pushing, pushing, pushing. Obviously, I was repeating the the tutorials. I was looking mm -hmm. at all the tutorials, and I was discovering this world. Our station was uh, a beta back in time, so mm. our station was growing up, and I was realizing how the you know, the whole industry start working. And actually, I have to say, Learn Square was out kind of in these dates. Uh, uh, I think it was when I was starting when they, they, they create the website. I don't, sorry, guys, I don't know when you started, but um, I think it was with them. Yeah, yeah, they, that, year, yeah. That, my, that year I finished my Photoshop course. Yeah, exactly. So Learn Square was out. I didn't have money to afford it back in time, but I was just looking at, uh, as I was telling you, like I was looking at the trailers and I was just with the sneak peek on the trailer, yeah. you can get, you know, so I was just looking at them. Um, I'm downloading all of the free PSDs from everybody and learning on myself and just practicing, practicing, practicing. And one year later, I had a decent portfolio. Not, the, I mean, back on, if I see that portfolio right now, it's a 
completely horrible. But <laughs> I applied to this company to be my painter, not concept artist. I was I was talking with the with the in El Ranchito when I did all my my painting. I did a year of my painting there because I was thinking like, okay, I'm just studying fine arts. I'm painting here with oils. I'm having fun because in fine arts I I sculpted real stone, you know, with the hammer and the and the knife. Uh, how do you call the the thing you use for for sculpt? You have the hammer and then you have the other tool. Um, Sorry, the chisel. The chisel, that one. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I did a sculpture with that when I was studying fine arts. It's mm. it's beautiful to do that, but obviously this is like you spend four months of your life just you know hitting a rock with a <laughs> chisel. So <laughs> so and and then it's a beautiful career. I recommend to make it. I, I wish I finished them, mm. but I was focused on like this is not going to give me you know a salary at the end of the day. At least for me, I don't feel it because I don't know how to be a contemporary artist and I don't feel it. You know, I was not in the mood. It's like okay. This is good for me to learn fundamentals. I'm going to take this career, fine arts, to learn all the fundamentals, to learn yeah. how to draw, how to know anatomy. And I never regret any anatomy of my classes. It was incredible to learn anatomy. Actually, I had the opportunity to go to one of the anatomy museums we have in Madrid. Yeah. Uh, it's a secret one, so only Ooh. a few people can go in. And I had the opportunity to go there. And wow, it was incredible to learn how, how the human body works and everything. And then... It's very good to learn how to sculpt in clay, how to, you know, sculpt in wood and in in stone. I did all of that, you know, like the classic fundamentals for to be, you know, like an artist. I did all of that. And I think that helps me a lot later on to understand Photoshop and to understand, uh, not understand Photoshop as it is, understand the paintings in Photoshop, how you can apply concepts from uh, traditional painting in oil. You can just mm -hmm. apply them in digital is completely fine you know there's, there's no police who is going to tell you like don't do that <laughs> uh, it's completely fine and and it's techniques you can use in both ways so and also you can use some of the techniques i, I would say from photoshop you learn and mostly when you learn 3d you can apply that techniques later on in real life mm -hmm. in painting, which is like it's a it's a the good thing about the world we're living now is just uh, all the techniques you can apply them anywhere so so yeah, I just jumped to be my painter. And even though in that company when I was doing my painting, they they know I want to be a concept artist. So sometimes they were picking concept jobs just for me, you know, like mm. which I feel super uh, thank thank you if somebody from Aranchito listened to me and when they give they gave me concepts and all of that, this thing, thanks for that, because I was doing my painting mostly and it's where I do all my Game of Thrones in the best time of mm. my life. Uh, you know, like you know, 21 year old and I was like uh, <laughs> doing Game of Thrones. Yeah, man. Mobile. Westworld. Such a fun, you know, imagine me as a fanboy sit down in the chair with the music all the time. There, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was like focused when I was there in my, my origins. Like I was my painter, uh, focusing on that, and then coming back home and just practicing. Um, well, I was going to the uni after work to finish fine arts, and then coming back home. So yeah, my schedule that time, my in my youngest. Uh, uni year when I start working on the industry as my painter, it was literally like work, uni, home. I mean, I arrive at home at like 11 p.m. So I just like from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. I can you know do art. Let's do art because mm. you are young and you know you, you can you can avoid the sleep. It's not necessary when you're <laughs> <very deep. That's laughs> you can true. avoid. You can sleep for hours and be fresh the next day. It's not yeah. a problem. So I was that kind of guy <laughs> because obviously. After the concept, you need to play some video games at 2 a.m. <laughs> so yeah. 2 a.m., 4 a.m., video games. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> so yeah, and then and then that's kind of my my origins. And then just like I left El Ranchito because I wanted to be on concept art. And one yeah. month, two months later, I get the gig on Captain Marvel and the rest of history. Sick. Like, what was it like jumping into, I mean, like ILM is kind of like coveted by so many, so many artists. Mm -hmm. Like, what was it? Yes. Is it what you expected in terms of like ILM is awesome because that's what everyone thinks and it was awesome or like because you you're not you're not there anymore are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. ILM was I mean obviously was something you don't even me. I was this kind of guy like working there. You see it, you know, the behind the scenes of uh, you know they release the behind the magic videos. Yeah, which is like the sounds of the movies they do, and you see the logo at the end, and you are like. Wow, dude, that yeah. company it's rocking. And he's like, Well, you are wearing the t-shirt and you work there, Pablo. Remember that. Yeah. So the thing is like when once you work in it, it's not because it's a bad thing. It's just when you work in it, you forget you're working for LM, just your mm -hmm. work, you know, you're just yeah. waking yeah. up, you 
all the movies and everything is super cool. And I would say the it's a, it was an incredible experience. I'm not there anymore. Uh, unfortunately, when I'm when I was starting the course, I said I, I in the course I said that's the only thing who is like a, maybe can be a little bit weird because I said like I'm working at ILM and I already finished, but you know, mm -hmm. it's just small. It's a super small period, so mm. I just uh, quick uh, quit like uh, it, it was not a quit because the company is bad or something because mm -hmm. so many people actually reached me out like, hey, what happened? You just quit ILM? What the hell? <laughs> and and people think all the time drama and bad yeah. things like. Uh, <laughs> get angry with somebody or or somebody, <laughs> with somebody i was like no i just quit because i wanted to try be freelance now yeah uh, we are everybody locked down and everything so mm -hmm. i had like very good uh opportunities i i, I was not taking because i was an lm mm -hmm. and now i was thinking like maybe i can stop here for a while i mean i i i i guess if i want to come back and there's hiring i guess you know maybe jason is my boss there they mm -hmm. want to have me back because there was no no drama no yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. bad like I, I i didn't feel it anymore and i just leave it you know like it's kind of like the way <laughs> the way i live like yeah. i didn't feel <laughs> uni i leave it i didn't feel much painting <laughs> i leave it i was not feeling ilm too much now because i wanted to mostly because i want to try video games i never work okay. on video games now working on video games nice i want to try video games i just like told to my boss like i want to try this maybe i'm shooting in my feet but i yeah, want yeah, to try yeah. it you know like uh i i'm as a as a my my you know my mates told me like my uh you know uh more experienced people than me they told me always like Pablo, you have one big advantage you're still young you you are in the time if you need mm. to do all mistake is the time now so yes. if you make but i don't feel it is an, any mistake i don't regret anything i did for now so I'm quite happy about it. I mean, obviously, I saw, you know, when I I left uh, El Manchito and then I saw the season eight and I was uh, of Game of Thrones and I was not in that one. I was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I could work in that season <laughs> too, but because obviously it was like the next. I mean, I just had to wait. Like since we finished Game of Thrones, you need to wait like seven months and yeah. seven months you have yeah. to again. So I was like, ah, seven months, but I don't regret it. It's like you just when no, you see it project you're like they're like oh it looks fun you know but but that was you know when when they were doing that i was doing captain marvel and captain marvel is, it was an incredible experience too Brilliant. uh working you know for the first time as a concept artist in another department in a press production i kind of say like i was lucky to have that opportunity early because that opportunity comes sometimes when you have a little bit more experience so thanks for the people who hired me for that projects uh and trust on my skills you know uh, even though i, I you know, everybody told me like, oh, you're a fucking baby. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm 22 years old, you know, and everybody treats you like, um, okay. And I, you know, you can see my face. Uh, I don't have beer. Then yeah. I look a little younger. So <laughs> <laughs> even my birthday was three days ago. Uh, uh, happy belated week. birthday. Um, I mean, my birthday was last Tuesday since we record this. Uh, you, are, you are and I talking. It was last, last Tuesday. Ah, happy belated uh, birthday. <laughs> yeah so uh i was always the baby in the teams you know <laughs> even in ranchito i was the youngest one and in captain marvel the youngest one but uh, thanks of everybody just trust and you know that's good mm -hmm. when people trust on on young people too because they give you these great opportunities and it's good if they trust on all people obviously i don't mean like only job for young people is a job for everybody if, it, yeah. if, if if it's the possibility so yeah thanks for everybody and yeah i mean that's kind of the, the, my my path this some kind of way just like i just left ilm and or or all the companies i've been working for just because i i wanted to try something new i mean i yes. know i always leave my door open if they want me to do any project or something just mm -hmm. call me and i will see if I, i've got free time and i will be happy to do it sick dude i think that's a great um note to end the podcast on there's so many okay. more things i'd love to chat with you but i know we'll be tight on time um yeah. your court whoever's listening to this now the course is already out and yes. if you listen to this i'm probably going to release this in a couple of days time so there's an early bird discount available so now's a good time to grab it the first lessons yep. uh, also free so you can still get a good taste of what's going to happen yep. in the course um before you can commit to buy it as well you already can see that i mean it's, it's on the lens square uh, instagram the sneak peeks and the yes exactly person. yeah oh, Pablo, just, thank you very much for your time um looking forward to you, the course thanks for the 
time and for the opportunity to be on this course. Thanks to you, man, and to everybody in the team, Andrew, Machek, us, Momo, everybody. Cheers, man. <laughs> cool. Nick. Nick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Nick. Nick. That's it. <laughs> Dude, yeah, we can wrap that up. Thanks again to Pablo for being my guest. Check out his course, Vehicle Concept Art, over at LearnSquare.com. Remember, the first lesson is free. You can find the links to the course as well as Pablo's work in this episode's description. Till next time.